Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The title of our experiment today is Physical Separation of Mixtures, experiment number two in your lab manual. In the class, we have learned the differences between the chemical combination between different materials and physical combination. We said that if the components, if you have two, three, four different materials and they are physically combined with each other, then we get a mixture. And this is the title of our experiment today. This is the objective. Today we will deal with a mixture which consists of three solid components that are physically interacted with each other. And we will learn how to apply some of the physical separation techniques to separate them back from each other, to separate them as a pure compounds. And then we will determine the percentage of each component in the original mixture. So today you should focus on the physical separation techniques, the definition of each one of them, and the application of each one of them. Because in your lab manual, when you open the experiment, page number, twenty-three, here, in the bottom of the page, you will find the physical separation techniques. We have different physical separation techniques. For example, the first one, sublimation, decanting, filtration, extraction, and so on. I am not going to explain the definition of each one of them right now because this will be explained during the lab session. I'll explain the definition, the application, everything in details about them. But you should know that all of them are important, and we are not gonna to apply all of them to our mixture today. We will select the suitable techniques uh, for our mixture to separate its components. So during the procedure part, I will select, I will explain only the physical techniques which are important for us, okay? But in the exam, in the theoretical exam, you should be able to answer any question related to any other techniques, even though if we do not apply it in our experiment today. Okay, so let's start here. As we said, the objectives today, two objectives should be achieved. The first one is to apply some of the physical separation techniques, as I said, from the list, to separate the solid components of our mixture today. So we can understand that our mixture today consists of solid materials. We are not gonna deal with liquid or gaseous materials because as you know, the physical state of the materials are not important to classify the material or to classify the matter as mixture or not. We can mix gases, we can mix liquids, we can mix solids, we can mix solid with liquid, gas. We can do any combination, any interaction we want. In our experiment today, we selected a solid, solid mixture which means all components are in their solid state. And the second objective is to determine the percentage of each component in the mixture. So today the masses are very important. After each step, we should record the mass. Don't forget it. And recording the mass should be carried out accurately and perfectly because any error, any mistake in this stage will affect our final results. Okay. Procedure part. Now I will explain the procedure, the procedure of this experiment briefly. After that, I'll do each step experimentally, practically. I'll demonstrate it by myself. But before proceeding to the procedure part and doing the experimental or the steps experimentally, I'll explain, yani, uh, explain these steps briefly. So what we'll do? First of all, we'll take a beaker, small beaker, we have here small beakers that are specified for the heating or for burning. So we will take a small beaker and we will prepare two grams of the mixture and we will place this mixture into the beaker. This step is already done. So I already weighed two grams of our mixture which consists of three solid components. The first one is NH4Cl, ammonium chloride, solid ammonium chloride. S states for solid state. NaCl solid and silicon dioxide solid. Now these three components are common. They have a commercial or a common name. For example, NH4Cl is ammonium chloride. This is the chemical name, but it's used in fertilizers. Many fertilizers 
contains ammonium salts. One of them is ammonium chloride. And ACL, the chemical name is sodium chloride, but its com common name is table salt. And silicon dioxide is sand. So I mix fertilizer with salt and with sand. So the first objective, as we said, how can we separate these mixtures or these three components from each other? What shall we do? Before doing anything, we said here that determination of percentages of each component is important. So don't do any single step before recording the masses. The masses or weighing everything is very important. So before doing anything, I record mass number one. Mass number one represents the mass of the beaker plus the two grams of the mixture inside it. This is mass number one. We'll use it later on in the calculation part. Don't forget it and don't ignore it. After weighing the mixture inside the beaker, we'll go directly to the heating step. So what we'll do, we'll take everything and we'll heat on Benson burner. Benson burner, this is the burner that provides us or provides us with the direct flame because there are many sources of heat in chemistry labs. Benson burner supplies us with the direct flame. Direct flame means the burning, the burning process because the other source of heat is hot plate, heating mantles. We have different devices that are used for heating. But today we use Benson burner. Now the maximum temperature that can be reached or achieved using the Benson burner is about, let's say, 400, 450 degrees Celsius. And this temperature, this amount of heat is sufficient to sublime ammonium chloride. With the meaning of sublimation, I'll talk about it in the class, okay, in the lab session. Sublimation means transferring the state of matter from solid state to gaseous state directly without passing through the liquid state. Ammonium chloride sublimes at about 300-360 degrees Celsius. All the properties, physical properties of these materials, you will find them here in the lab manual, page number 25, here in this small table, okay? This point is listed. Ammonium chloride sublimes at 340 degrees Celsius, while sodium chloride sublimes at 800 degrees Celsius. Silicon dioxide never sublimes. It melts at above 1,600 degrees Celsius, which means if I take my mixture and heat it using the Benson burner, which supply me, which sub supply me with 400 degrees Celsius, it means that nothing will be affected except ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride only will sublime, while the other two materials, sodium chloride and silicon dioxide, will remain as they are. They will never be affected by Benson burner. And this is what are we going to do. This is called sublimation. So after heating, what will happen? Ammonium chloride will sublime, and it will sublime or it will appear as a white smoke you will observe the appearance of white smoke, which states, which represents the gaseous ammonium chloride. So when shall we stop the heating process? We should stop the heating process when the white smoke disappears, which means that the whole amount of ammonium chloride is sublimated. And this is what we will do in the second step. Heat on Benson burner until the whole amount of ammonium chloride is sublimated. How can I tell? when the white smoke will disappear, okay? So what we will get after the system? We will end up with a beaker and the remaining residue. This is called the remaining components of the mixture. This is, this is called residue. Residue means the remaining components. We will end up with the beaker, sodium chloride, and silicon dioxide. Before proceeding to the third step, take everything and wait. This is mass number two represents the mass of the beaker plus the residue. Residue what are the remaining materials? The remaining materials are sodium chloride and silicon dioxide. This mass is very important. We'll use it in the calculation part. Last step. Now we are going to separate sodium chloride from silicon dioxide. How can we separate them? In the table here again, one of the physical properties that is listed here in the solubility in water. 
you will discover that according to the table sodium chloride is soluble in water and this is known by default you know that table salt is soluble in water while sand which is silicon dioxide is insoluble what does that mean it means that if I added water if I add water to the mixture sodium chloride will dissolve directly while silicon dioxide will remain as precipitate and this is what we will do after recording the mass here add about 30 milliliters of water to dissolve sodium chloride and to facilitate its separation so here I'll add water and I'll do stirring for the mixture what will happen sodium chloride will dissolve silicon dioxide will precipitate how can we separate them the answer is by filtration one of the physical separation techniques one of the basic physical separation techniques is filtration We'll explain the types of filtration, simple filtration, vacuum filtration, suction filtration. Each type will be explained during the lab session. But now here we'll do only the simple filtration. Filtration will separate the silicon dioxide, on the, it will stuck on the filter paper, while water and salt will pass through the filter paper. So simply we can separate them by filtration. Now what we'll do? After drying the filter paper, we'll take it and we'll record mass number 3, which represents silicon dioxide, which is the sand, plus the mass of the filter paper. Now, the pre-step for any filtration process, for any filtration process, the pre-step is weighing the empty filter paper. Don't forget it. So, we record the mass of the empty filter paper. Now, what we'll do? Subtract the mass of filter paper from the mass 3, which is filter paper and silicon dioxide. What do you will get? You will get the mass of silicon dioxide. Okay, that's it for today. This is the brief explanation of the procedure. And now I am going to demonstrate all steps by myself. Yeah.